welcome to episode two of Plug Life Television. We have yet another under the bonnet special for you today. Another question that we didn't have enough time to read out during my recent Energy Saving Trust Scotland webinar. So today's question is, can we get a lithium ion battery pack to last as long as the vehicle that it's installed in? Now the person asking that question has quoted a lifespan of 16 years, so that's what I'm going to stick to for now. I'm going to hit you with some science because I reckon you can take it, and then I'm going to also broaden the scope of that question because it actually asks more questions itself when you look at it. But I'm sure that you'll agree that by the end of my explanation, the news just keeps getting better and better on this one. A quick look on Autotrader would suggest that there may be bad news in answers to this question. Many of the original Japanese-built Nissan Leafs for sale today have lost some of their state of health bars, which indicate the capacity of the battery today versus when it was new. However, this is because Nissan learned an expensive lesson early on about cell chemistry. There are many different materials that can be used to make the cathode, that's the positive electrode, in a lithium-ion cell. Lithium manganese oxide has good thermal stability, but a poor cycle life. That is, it can't be charged and discharged very often before it dies. Lithium nickel oxide is inexpensive and has a better cycle life, but has poor thermal stability. Lithium cobalt oxide has good energy density, but poor thermal stability. Lastly, lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, is a relatively docile chemistry, which is difficult to blow up, and has excellent power density, but poor energy density. In order to create the best cell for a given application, manufacturers will mix various cathode materials to obtain the best properties. One of the most common mixes found in a modern electric vehicle is lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide, or NMC. This chemistry takes its relative inexpensiveness from lithium nickel oxide, the thermal stability from lithium manganese oxide, and its high energy density from lithium cobalt oxide. The resultant chemistry also has a long cycle life and alleviates most of the weaknesses of each of its constituent components. In the automotive world, Tesla stands alone in its use of lithium nickel cobalt aluminium oxide, which offers market-leading energy density, but suffers from accelerated degradation at higher temperatures. However, Tesla have overcome this with a well-refined thermal management system, which keeps the pack at its ideal operating temperature. For example, when ludicrous mode is activated, the cells are preheated to improve their performance, but as soon as the desired temperature is reached, the cooling fan is activated to stop the pack from getting too hot. The extra care afforded to thermal management gives Tesla packs long service lives. As this data collated by Dutch and Belgian Tesla owners shows, Tesla packs experience less than 10% capacity degradation by the time the car has clocked up 250,000 kilometers, or just over 156,000 miles. Since the average number of miles driven annually in the UK is approximately 8,000 miles, this equates to less than 10% capacity loss in over 19 years worth of driving. As for Nissan's early woes, the original Japanese-built Leafs from 2011 to 2013 used a poorly chosen ratio of lithium nickel oxide and lithium manganese oxide, which experienced rapid degradation at higher temperatures. This was fixed for the Mark 1.5 Leaf from late 2013 onwards. Top buying tip. If the Leaf that you're looking at has black seats or has a mechanically operated handbrake in the form of an extra foot pedal, then it has the newer, better chemistry in the battery pack. So far, we've looked at how cathode chemistry affects pack lifetime. Now let's have a look at the four main anode or negative electrode materials. Lithium, carbon, silicon, and lithium titanate. First up is lithium, the original anode chemistry. This gives the highest energy density since 100% of the anode can technically take part in the reaction, since it is wholly comprised of lithium. However, lithium anodes have a major safety issue. During charging, lithium can form branch-like growths called dendrites, which can puncture the separator and reach the cathode, causing an internal short circuit. Therefore, very few attempts have been made to commercialise this anode material in a conventional lithium-ion cell. This led to the development of the carbon anode, usually in the form of graphite, the most common anode material in use today. During charging, lithium ions intercalate, or sandwich themselves, in between layers of graphene, causing some expansion of the anode material but helping to prevent dendrite growth and internal short circuits. However, graphite can only store one lithium ion per six carbon atoms, resulting in very low energy density. Silicon anodes promise an improvement in energy density over carbon anodes. However, during charging, their expansion is even worse, with silicon anodes expanding up to five times their original size in order to accommodate lithium. This creates mechanical strain, which ultimately causes the anode structure to break, 
Furthermore, the protective solid electrolyte interface is also cracked in the expansion process, resulting in it being thickened as it self-repairs. This increases the internal resistance of the cell and reduces its performance, usefulness and lifespan. Lithium titanate is, in many ways, a promising anode material. It undergoes next to no expansion during charging and supports very fast reactions, meaning that such cells are well suited to high performance applications. However, for reasons that shall be the focus of a future episode, cells that use lithium titanate anodes have low energy density. As with cathodes, some manufacturers mix anode materials to harness the best properties of each type of material. Recently, high capacity cells have been launched on the market that feature carbon anodes with a small amount of silicon, which feature the increased energy density thanks to silicon, whilst carbon helps to reduce the level of expansion and contraction during cycling. In terms of the next big breakthroughs in the lab, solid state lithium cells will see a return to pure lithium anodes. This is made possible because the solid electrolytes are dendrite proof. As a result, this cell chemistry is the holy grail, promising high energy density, no internal short circuiting, little in the way of expansion issues, low costs, the ability to operate over a wide temperature range, potentially fast charge and discharge times, and also a long cycle life. However, don't expect to see them in EVs until about 2025. So far, my answer has focused on how we can get the lifespan of a battery pack to equal that of a typical vehicle on the road today. However, EVs are not typical vehicles and have much longer service lives than a petrol or diesel car. A perfect example of this is Wizzy, the Nissan Leaf Taxi from Cornwall. By the time it had racked up 100,000 miles, it still had all of its battery state of health bars. And by the time it had reached 170,000 miles, it had lost only two. And despite losing those two state of health bars, it was still in regular use as a taxi. Wizzy was retired as a taxi after 174,000 miles, and the only mechanical repair it required in all of those miles of service? One ball bearing. Name me one petrol or diesel taxi that can claim that level of reliability. This means that battery packs have an even tougher job to try and match the lifespan of the vehicle in which they are installed. However, why would they need to? Comparing the running costs of Wizzy with a typical diesel taxi, we find that Wizzy saved over £12,000 in fuel alone, never mind maintenance. At the moment, a replacement battery pack from Nissan costs about £4,200, which means that Wizzy has already paid for its replacement pack nearly three times over. Those replacement packs are getting cheaper all the time, and reconditioned and crash salvage packs are available for a lot less cash. Looking again at the Japanese-built Mark 1 Leaf, which had lost four state of health bars over just 64,000 miles, and running the numbers again, we see that it has already more than paid for its replacement pack in fuel savings alone. Now we can start to be clever about our EV buying options. Thanks to Wizzy, we know that the Leaf is a robust vehicle. If we bought the Mark 1 Leaf for just under £5,000 and installed a brand new pack with the latest chemistry for £4,200, we could repower the Leaf and have a solid, reliable EV for just over £9,000 which is roughly the same price as a second-hand Mark 1.5 Leaf with the newer, better battery pack installed. However, our repowered Leaf would have a brand new pack that should easily manage over 150,000 miles. And once again, reconditioned and crash salvage battery packs make this process even cheaper. But the good news doesn't stop there. There is an emerging battery market for Second Life applications. For example, Nissan is teaming up with Ovo Energy to manufacture home energy storage packs using old leaf packs. Therefore, when removing the old pack from the leaf, we can sell it and make back some of our money. Back to the question of battery lifespan. We have learned that we can extend a battery's lifespan through better cell chemistry and better thermal management, but we can also increase its lifespan through improved battery management system technology. When using a conventional wired battery management system with a battery pack with cells connected in parallel, if one cell starts to fail, the BMS won't notice since the other cells will try to compensate for it. It is only once the cell has badly degraded and dragged the state of health of its neighbouring cells in the parallel string down with it that the BMS will realise that something is wrong and throw an error message, by which time the pack will be in dire need of maintenance. Conversely, with the Decozy wireless cell monitoring system, each cell in the pack is monitored. If one cell in a parallel string starts to fail, the Decozy system will know straight away and send a message to the user to service the pack before the rest of the parallel string is impacted. This allows predictive maintenance rather than reactive maintenance, thus improving the health of the battery and its lifespan.
Well, I hope you found that answer informative and enlightening. Uh, before I go, just a quick reminder that this coming Thursday, 19th of July at 6pm, I'll be giving a talk at Dundee Museum of Transport called Electric Vehicles, You'll Wish You'd Bought One Sooner. I'll be going into the history of electric vehicles, the practicalities of owning and driving one, including my vintage electromobile, Peugeot 106 Electric from 1999, and I'll be doing a fair dose of myth-busting as well. Uh, so hopefully by the end of that, even the most die-hard petrol head will see that it's definitely worth going electric. And also, a final quick heads up to uh, Dundee City Council, who've just opened the biggest rapid charging hub uh, available to the public in the UK for electric vehicles. Absolutely phenomenal to look at. It has put the technology on par with petrol and diesel stations. You can easily refill your car. Waiting times will be minimal. There's six rapid chargers and also six bays for fast charging. Uh, so you can pop off to the shops for a couple of hours and your car will be ready by the time you come back. It's a brilliant, brilliant development in Dundee and that's sort of the second one they've done, but they've got more underway and that once they've finished those, they've got even more amazing ideas in the pipeline. They are an incredible local authority. They are leading the way and I'm chuffed to bits to be able to call myself an adopted Dundonian having lived there for eight brilliant years. Well, until next time, take care. I'll see you soon for another episode of Plug Life Television.